you know me, or maybe you thought you did. But now you've heard more about me than probably most people even wanted to hear. There will be those who claim we know the mysteries of Gog and Magog. We know the mysteries of the two horned ones. We know the mysteries of the Greens or Chidr and the story of Moses and the true children of Israel. Those who claim we know the mysteries of the soul. We are those who know how to save you the, from the trial and tribulation of the Antichrist. They'll say, I will save you from the fitna of Messiah Dajjal. And one by one, leaders will come. False prophets, false leaders, false Christs and false gods. And tell me, brothers and sisters, do you really think you have what it takes to not get fooled? Do you really think you're not a pawn? Do you really think you understand? See, I don't know what I'm talking about at all. All I know is that guy, that guy in the cave who takes care of his father. See, he brings the milk to his father and serves his father. I don't have a sacred cow or any pure milk. I don't have anything anymore in my job to take care of my own father. I can't even take care of myself. I'm an embarrassment if I was supposed to be anything like that guy. If I needed to pray to the Lord and get us out of this cave, if I need to remove this rock, this stone, this boulder that is weighing down on us, I don't think... I did it. But it turns out the second guy in the cave, the story of the second guy who falls in love, I'm the guy who falls in love and I screw it up and I mess up the deal and I lose up. The one brother who swore to be my brother, the only brother on this earth who pledges to be my head, I lose that brother like the second guy in the cave, I'm supposed to be a better man and I'm not any worth worthy. I can't move this stone. I'm praying and this doesn't work. And the third guy, the third guy in the cave, I have a brother that I owe more than anything for the help that he's given me. I mean, I really owe him. And now I was supposed to take care of everything for money and finances. And now I owe him money. Screw the bank and the mortgages and the other stuff. This is a real brother who I owe money. I mean, I already owed him more than anything. And now I owe him physical money. And I'm in debt for the first time in my life. And I've always had money. And now I'm in debt. And I owe him more than anything else. And I'm like the third guy in the cave, except I can't repay my brother because I'm broke. The mysteries of the knowledge of the cave do not come easy, brothers and sisters. I have presented to you the hadith of the story of the cave with the sharh, with the explanation, with the meanings taken not from any book that you can find 
in any script or any language anywhere on this earth. The explanation of the hadith of the cave that I am telling you, brothers and sisters, is only found in one certain book. The book is called Salim, son of Shamshad, from the family of Siddiqi. And only you can decide. Is it a book that I extend my right hand and I receive it? Or am I telling you a story from a book that's not worthy to listen to? My name is Salim. I speak to you from my heart and I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm so confused and I have royally screwed up. I'm not able to move this rock and I can't get us out of here. I'm not the guy you're looking for. I don't know how to save you. I don't know how to save me. I don't know how to save anyone. I am totally lost and I can't figure it out. And I wish somebody would just help because all I need is a little mercy. Oh Lord, please get me out of here. The phone rings. It's really late at night and I'm totally depressed and I get the call. Assalamu alaikum. It's my cousin. Everything okay? You okay? Yeah, alhamdulillah. He says no problem. First question in our family. Where are you? <laughs> Second question when you get a call from someone in our family. It's my cousin. He's the son of my dad's younger brother. You see, where are you? <laughs> I'm in the mountains in Kashmir. <laughs> I'm on the other side of the world. Are you okay? Third question in our family, because the truth is, if somebody asks you, are you okay? You say, yeah, fine, alhamdulillah. But reality is, no, I'm not okay. <laughs> are you okay? He says, no, I'm not okay at all. <laughs> Why? What's going on? You see, news had already come. My dad's younger brother had passed away. And my cousin and I hadn't talked for a long time. And he was gone to Kashmir with his wife and he was looking for something and he's there in the mountains of Kashmir and he's saying to me on this night when I'm more confused than anyone and he's calling me and he's saying, I'm not okay, listen, I got something to ask you because this is really strange and I'm really confused and I don't know what the frack is going on and I'm in Kashmir and they're telling me a bunch of really weird stuff and I don't understand what any of this means and I figure if anybody knows what's going on, uh, uh, you know, uh, Salim, you 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 better tell me what's going on. Okay, what are what are they saying? What's going on? They're telling me. <laughs> they're telling me. They're telling me that the prophet, the prophet Muhammad's not dead. He's alive. Excuse me. Sorry. Say that again. I didn't really quite get you. I mean, it's a long distance. I'm not sure what you really said. No, they're saying to me that the prophet's not dead. He's alive. That he didn't die. What? What are you talking about? Yeah, I've talked to these people. They're, they're Muslims. They're here. They're local. The people, they're really active. And they're trying to explain to me something. And they're explaining to me we're talking. And I don't really understand what they're saying. And they're saying, no, his messengership ended. But he's not, he's not dead. He's alive. I don't understand what they're talking about, so I figured you might know what they're talking about, so can you please explain to me what they're talking about? I think, okay, wait a second. Take, take a deep breath. Let's think this through. First question, <laughs> brothers and sisters. Uh, they're not talking about Jesus, right? <laughs> I mean, all the Christian brothers and sisters listening to this, they're thinking, yeah, man, I mean, you got a messenger, you got somebody who you think is dead and know he's actually alive. That sounds like Jesus, right? I mean, Jesus ascended from to the heavens or something like that, right? I mean, that sounds like Jesus. No, Jesus is alive, right? <laughs> I say, you know, they're not talking about Jesus. They're not talking about Isa. They're not talking about Jesus, right? No, no, no. They're talking about the prophet Muhammad. I said, okay, you know, you never know what kind of Muslims you're in Kashmir. Maybe they're talking about Muslims that don't know anything about Islam. There's all kind of weird and strange Muslims out there, you know. 
No, they're talking about the Prophet Muhammad and they're saying he's not dead, he's alive. That, of course, he his messengership ended, but he's not dead, he's alive. Is that true? Is that possible? I say, okay, come on. Now, this is me you're talking to, right? So, let's just break this down. Of course, when you talk to most people, that's not what you actually say, right? Now, of course, let's really talk about this clearly, right? He says, I'm, I'm really confused because I don't think I understand what they mean. They're, they're explaining this to me in Kashmiri and they're talking in Urdu and I, I need someone to explain this to me in fracking English because I don't understand what they mean. You know, I'm from over here and, and they're trying to explain it to me in Kashmiri and I'm trying to get the translation through my wife and I don't know what they really mean and it sounds like they, they're saying he's alive somewhere and, you know, you... He's he's not dead, and I don't understand what they mean. And I, can you tell me what this means? Because I'm totally, totally lost. It's like late Monday night, and I'm thinking to myself, "Okay, come on, all right, let's really think about this." I say, "Of course, when you're talking, there's always both life and death of this world, but we are we are Muslims. We are followers of the Prophet. We are mujahideen." Right? I'm saying to my own cousin. We know that we're searching for something more, right? There's more than just the life of this world. Right? I mean, the goal is about, about searching for something. And if you die as a shaheed, as a martyr, then you go up into the heavens and, you know, you get to fly as a, as a bird out into the, to the skies, all the way up to the higher realms or everything. And even the shaheed, we say the person who is is killed in battle, we don't call that person dead. We say he is alive with, with the Lord Most High in a state of total total risk, in a state of total abundance, in a state of total everythingness, wanting and, and wishing for nothing, in a state where you have everything and everything is totally good. And that's the case for a shaheed, right? I mean, I'm saying to my cousin, look, you know, we've all thought about going to the front line and giving ourselves for the path of Allah and dying in the path of Allah. And of course, you know that that'll happen whenever it's supposed to happen. But the point is, there's something more than this life, right? And if you're a shaheed, if you're a, a martyr, you know, there's all the rewards of, of the next life. There's something more than this world, right? We know that. And if that's the case for a, a shaheed... That's the case for a martyr, then what's the case for a actual messenger? So he says, I don't understand what you mean. We're talking on the phone. This is long distance. Maybe I'm not getting it. I don't, I don't know. So you're saying the prophet's alive and he's not dead? I'm saying, of course, no. The prophet is a man, right? I go, this is the thing. They try to make everybody beyond a man. We are those who say that everybody is a man, right? Adam was a man. Noah was a man. Right? Abraham was a man. Ishmael, Isaac, man. Jacob, Joseph, Moses, David, Solomon. All of them were men. They're all sons of Adam. We're sons of Adam. Jesus was a man. Son of Mary, born of a miraculous birth, but of flesh and blood. Son of man. We're all men. And Jesus didn't die, right? He ascended. The difference between us and the Christians is that we believe that Jesus did not die. He ascended because every man lives once and dies once. Jesus didn't die. He ascended in physical form and will return and live out the rest of his life and die just like every man has to. 